Good morning, Vitor. Good morning. Can you hear me well? Yes, very, very well. Good. So I think that we can start as to uh, as 12.30 uh, local time okay. in Brazilian. So I will make your presentation uh, for our guests. Well, uh, we have the pleasure to have now Mr. Vitor Dotta. Vitor Dotta is finishing his master in economics at the University Sorbonne Paris Nord and Berlin School of Economics and Law. Uh, with focus on the de development economics, economic complexity, development banks and monetary economics. He worked on the Calder Verdun laws, monetary economics and development banks. He is currently working on development models and on financial integration of the European Union, financed by the German Central Bank. He was also the editor in charge of our website, the, the website of the Structuralist Development Macroeconomics Research Group, and he was also my student uh, at his undergraduate course at the University of Brasilia. So uh, I have the pleasure to introduce Vitor Dodotta. Vitor, the audience is yours. Okay. Uh, how, how many minutes do I have to present? I think that uh, 25 minutes will be okay. Okay, perfect. Uh, let me just go for the slideshow. Okay. Uh, one second. Yes, no. Okay. So, hello, everybody. Um, good afternoon or good morning, depending on the time zone you are at the moment. Uh, I will present uh, a model, uh, in fact, a comparison of models which uh, the, which uh, Professor Oredo, uh, uh, me, uh, Marvel, and Jean Pedreringer uh, have developed. And uh, to see, to compare this, this case of inspiration models uh, and see uh, the uneven development, uh, how can they explain uneven development? Uh, I will first uh, present what is the immediate and deep determinant of economic development. Uh, so initially, uh, you have uh, the ultimate and approximate uh, growth causality uh, by Madison, where he, he argues that the immediate determinants of economic development are the existing amount of physical and human capital, and the availability of natural resources, and the efficiency in using ex existing resources, and the level of technical and scientific knowledge existing at a given point in time. Uh, then uh, it is also the deep determinants of uh, economic development are the reasons why countries differ in other in other terms of the availability of factors uh, that determines income per capita. For instance, uh, geography, institutions, uh, income distribution, and economic policy regimes. So theories of immediate causes, uh, the, the theories of immediate causes of economic growth can be classified in two large groups. So the first group is the set of uh, theories uh, which began with Solow, seminal work in 1956, 1957, uh, which uh, it's the new classical approach. Uh, this approach assumes that the fundamental limit to long-term growth is given by the supply side of the economy. Uh, more specifically, these models consider that the only uh, the, the long-term growth of the economy of the real products determined by the accumulation of factors of production, uh, capital and labor, and the pace of technological progress. So aggregate demand is only relevant in those models uh, to explain the degree in of use of the productive capacity, and but has no direct impact in determining the pace of, of economic expansion. Um, in the long run, uh, it reigns the validity of the sales of sales law, and that is that the supply uh, determines the aggregate demand. Um, so the second set of theories of immediate causes of development are consistent are from the, the general theory are inspired by the general theory on the principle of effective demand, according to which the level of production and employment is determined by the aggregate demand, uh, originally anchored in the short-term Marshallian perspective, and also 
Uh, it was for Keynes' uh, disciples that specifically Harold, Robinson, and Calder in the 50s and 60s to expand the principle of effective demand to the long run, uh, which is uh, which something that Keynes didn't take into consideration. His theory is the change of the capital stock, uh, population, and production techniques uh, over time. So this authors will call, it's called uh, the, the, the post keynesian School or the Cambridge School, since most authors uh, taught at Cambridge University. Um, so an even, an even development uh, is, and it, it's clearly uh, presented by the, the data that we see uh, in a variety of countries in the world. So in the last 200 years, there's a, uh, there's a very big difference uh, in persistence persistent difference in the rate of growth of labor productivity and income per capita among countries in the world. Uh, these asymmetries are mainly the result of the technological asymmetries as differences in the productive structure. Uh, an even development thus uh, is the occurrence of systemic differences in the growth of labor productivity and the per capita income growth between countries. So here is uh, a list of data. Uh, this probably we need to update it. This uh, shows the difference in rate of growth among countries uh, from the 19th century, the late 19th century, towards the beginning of the end of the 20th century. Century, and you can clearly see the average growth rate differentiates a lot between countries. So uh, then, uh, using the models of Keynesian inspiration, uh, the main feature of Keynesian models are the idea that investment rate determines the rate of savings and not the way around. So investment decision is the main driver of economic growth. Uh, however, these models can only be differentiated in according, according to two fundamental criteria. So these criteria are the labor supply elasticity and the existence of unintended excess capacity. Uh, the new Cajun growth models, for instance, uh, labor supply is inelastic. And so economic growth is limited by the growth rate of the labor force in the long run. Uh, firms operate with a normal level of capacity utilization, which means that there is no unintended excess capacity. Uh, all excess capacity is planned as normal. Uh, these models do not have a clear and unique explanation for an equal development. Um, for instance, these models are derived from the works of Calder and also Luigi Pacinetti. The growth rate of output is determined by the so-called growth rate, natural growth rate, which is given by the sum of uh, growth rate of labor force and also the growth rate of labor productivity. Uh, the difference in performance in, for instance, the asymmetries between these countries are a result of technological uh, asymmetries and also the level of technological gap. Uh, the concept of technological gap is over Spargen and Fagenberg. And also there is the adjustment of saving level to the level of investment is obtained through the income distribution between wages and profits. Uh, so the new Kalekian growth models, uh, labor supply is unlimited and firms operate with unintended excess capacity. Uh, the adjustment of saving rates to the rate of investments made by changes in the level of capacity utilization. Income distribution is exogenous, is an exogenous variable and is determined at the microeconomic micro level by market structures in which firms operate, for instance, the markup level. Right. Uh, changes in economic distribution have an impact over the effective demand and the pace of accumulation, giving rise to different demand growth regimes, which are the stagnationist, uh, which is that the weight share is associated with uh, an increase in weight share is associated with an increase in effective demand and also in capacity utilization, and the exhalationist when the increase in a wage share is associated with a decrease in effective demand and capacity utilization. Uh, making uh, space for two uh, different growth regimes, which are the wage-led growth and the profit-led growth. The first being the, that an increase in wage is associated with an increase in the pace of uh, capital accumulation and also in the growth rate of out output. Uh, and the second, which the profit-led, is an increase in the wage share is associated with an increase in decrease in capital accumulation and uh, in the real output. So uh, moving uh, forward to, to what is mostly uh, the, the new uh, development 
uh, the developmental school or the Kenyan structuralist school growth models. Uh, for instance, uh, there's unlimited supply of labor and firms operate with a normal level of capacity utilization. Uh, the rate of dif the rate uh, the differences between countries regarding the growth rate of labor productivity and income per capita are mainly due to the pr productive structure between those two countries, uh, mainly the manufacturing share in output. These asymmetries uh, in the productive structure give the rise to difference, uh, balance of pay differences in balance of payment constraint growth and the rate of uh, growth rate due to the impacts of such asymmetries over the income of cities of imports and exports. Uh, these asymmetries, for instance, uh, can be resulted, can, can result of the real exchange of revaluation due to capital inflows, for instance, uh, the Dutch disease. Here, uh, this is the basic setup for a new Keynesian growth model. Uh, first, you have uh, the, a production function, which is a labor, uh, a Leontief production function. I think due to my time constraint, I will just go a bit faster. Uh, and um, so, for instance, uh, labor and labor productivity, it's A, uh, and U is the degree of utilization of productive capacity, V is the potential. Uh, product is the ratio of potential product to capital. Uh, equation three is the labor employed uh, to level of production. Equation four is the employment output and productivity growth rates. Equation five is the output growth equals to the growth rate of the labor force and productivity. Equation six, for instance, is the growth rate, is the natural growth rate of the economy. Equations seven, eight, and nine are the technical progress functions, which we will explore further now. Yes. Technical, the, the term A0 uh, in the in equation seven represents the share of technical progress that is autonomous in relation to effort to capital accumulation. It is therefore a part of the technical progress that is disembodied from machinery and equipment capital machinery and equipment. Uh, so the productivity gains are originated uh, on organizational changes, which allow the increase in productivity without the realization of any additional investment in capital products. Uh, the term A1, uh, A1 K hat, uh, is the changes, uh, in turn represents a change of technical progress that is incorporated into machines and equipment, and therefore is induced by capital accumulation efforts. Uh, therefore, the coefficient A1 represents the sensitivity, sensitivity of growth rate of labor productivity to changes in growth rate of capital stock per worker. This coefficient causes uh, captures the ability to transform the flow of new ideas in, and knowledge into increased productivity through investment. Uh, this coefficient uh, uh, of productivity go growth by capital accumulation depends in turn on the size of the technological gap. That is the distance between uh, the level of technology in one country uh, at a point in time to the technological frontier. For instance, how, distance is a, how distant is a country, the technology that, is a con that's a, that a country is using to the state of the art technologies. Uh, continuing the technical progress function part two, uh, to answer the question of what is the relation between technical progress and the coefficient of induction of production function of technical progress, uh, to a certain extent, countries behind the technological frontier uh, can increase their productivity simply by imitating and learning production methods employed by countries in the frontier. But this is limited. This is limited because the growth rate of the productivity of the economy behind the technological frontier is a positive function of the distance that separates it with respect to, this, to the same frontier. Uh, as imitation evolves, at least in part, the purchase of machinery and equipment of countries bordering the frontier, it follows that countries often, often induction um, of a function technical progress must depend on the size of the technological gap. Uh, in this way, countries behind the technological frontier may benefit from the positive over overflow of technological knowledge possessed by the leading, leading countries in the frontier of the technology. But it should be emphasized, however, that this positive re re reduction coefficient 
uh, depends on the learning ability, and this is crucial for the model, and the learning ability and the absorptive capacity of a country that a country possesses. Uh, the absorptive capacity uh, depends on the distance that this country is in relation to the technological frontier. If the distance is too large, then the country will not be able to take the advantage of positive overflow effects of leading uh, technology countries. In this case, the coefficient of induction of the production function will be decreasing function of the technological gap. Um, so the dynamics of uh, stock of capital per worker and labor productivity growth. Uh, in equation 10, we have the growth of uh, capital stock per worker, uh, which we will call uh, GK. And in equation 11 is the rate of growth productivity. So the rate of the growth, the rate of growth of productivity depends on the growth rate of capital stock and depends on the growth rate of capital stock on the growth rate of labor productivity and also on the technological gap. Uh, a numerical example, uh, a numerical example can help illustrate the, the, the relationship between the growth of labor productivity and the technological gap. Uh, if, we, if we consider the coefficient A0, uh, the part of which is disembodied from, from capital machinery, equals to 0 0.01, uh, HO 0 0.8, which is, the which is the parameter that represents the learning capacity of the economy. And if we suppose a stock, a capital stock growth of 2% and the labor force growth of 1%, uh, the visualization uh, of the relation between the growth, uh, the growth of labor productivity and the technological gap can be seen in this figure. Uh, for instance, uh, the, it's, if the country is on the left side, uh, if there is an increasing capa absorbing capacity until it reaches, uh, if, it, it depending on, on how far it is from the, the frontier of technology. If you are uh, towards the right side of the, of the, of the, the graph, uh, the learning capacity falls. Uh, the dynamics of capital accumulation and balanced growth in the model. Uh, so, yes. Uh, the produced quantity of the economy depends on the capital stock, uh, on the degree of utilization of the capital stock, and also on the relation of product capital. Uh, GY in equation 13 is the rate of growth. Uh, GU is the normal utilization, is the utilization degree. And GV is the growth rate of potential product to capital. Uh, in equation 16, for instance, after some algebraic manipulation, uh, we arrive at the natural growth rate of this economy, which has to be, uh, which is an increasing function of the technological gap for countries where delta, uh, which is the the sorry the uh, the absorption capacity of the economy uh, is smaller than G, which is the technological gap. Uh, another numerical example. Um, I will. Yes, uh, this part of the numerical example is to show the, the relationship between the natural growth rate and the technological gap. Uh, an economy in which the labor force grows at 1%, uh, a, a zero again of 0 0.01, an A2 uh, 0 0.2, and the parameter of the absorbing capacity, uh, delta uh, of 1.5, in figure two, and then we can we can see it on the slide. Also, it's an increasing function uh, of the technological of the technical uh, technological gap. Okay. Um, here I saw are some uh, macroeconomic identities uh, which are part of the model. I don't think I will go much in detail, but this is. Uh, well, uh, the, you have uh, in the, the equation 17 is uh, investment equals to normal rate of investment. Um, and yes, so uh, the equation, the most important equation here is equation 31, which is the total saving of the economy. Just a second. So uh, from equation 31, we can derive uh, four particular cases. Uh, the Ricardian saving function 
is workers' propensity to save is equal to zero and all profits are distributed. Uh, the Herodian saving function, which uh, in which workers and capitalists' propensities to save are equal and all profits are distributed. Uh, the Pazinetti saving function, which workers uh, have a non-zero propensity to save, but lower the capacity, but lower than capa uh, capitalists' propensity to save, and all profits are distributed. Uh, and the, finally, the Caldorian saving function, uh, that firms retain a share of the total profits, but households and cap capitalists or workers had the same propensity to save. The retains profit coefficient is higher than ho for households, uh, propensity to save. So uh, balanced uh, growth under the Caldorian closure of this model would be based on equation 16, which relates the natural growth rate with the growth rate of, uh, of uh, labor force, uh, the technological gap, um, the saving function in equation 31, uh, the natural growth rate and the growth rate of the capital stock in equation 14, and the natural growth rate uh, in equation 14a. So the warranted growth rate uh, is in equation 41. Uh, an important distinction of the Caldorian closure is uh, with respect to the Herodian model is that savings as a fraction of the capital stock is no longer constant, but varies with uh, a function of distribution of income uh, between wages and profits and the mechanism established by the warranted rate of growth can adjust to the natural rates, thus guaranteeing the existence of a balanced uh, trajectory. Uh, in equation 41, we can see here, uh, we observe that the given uh, normal, given the normal rate of uh, utilization product of the productive capacity, uh, potential output ratio and propensity to save from households, the oriented growth of rate is a growing function of profit share. Um, this is because uh, this is because the the main aggregate propensity to save is the weighted average of the profits to the uh, in the income propensity to save and the propensity to save of households and increase in the profit shares of income will distribute income from lower propensity uh, to save units to the higher propensity to save units, thus leading to an increase in aggregate propensity to save and therefore the warranted growth rate. Uh, continuing, uh, so this is uh, the tra tra trajectory of the balanced growth rate, uh, the warranted growth rate where it's equal to the natural to the natural growth rate of the economy. Uh, continuing in equation 40 now, um, actually in equation 42, the share uh, of profits is an adjusting mechanism to the warranted rate of growth and adjusts to the value of the natural rate. Uh, another numerical example, I will uh, skip this because I have to go a bit faster because I'm running out of time, I think. Um, so uh, the profit-led growth is a, in a new Keynesian growth models, regardless of the specification of the saving function, the accumulation regime is clearly profit-led. Profit uh, indeed, an increase, an endogenous increase in the natural rate of growth, for example, increase in the rate of uh, growth of the labor force will require an increase in the rate of investments and savings. Uh, in order for savings to adjust to the level of investments required for the new balanced growth trajectory, the share of profits and income should increase in order to redistribute uh, income from lower propensity to save units, which are households and workers in this model, to higher propensity to save units, which are capitalists and firms. Uh, in this way, the aggregate saving will increase by adjusting to the level of investment that is required for a sustainable growth rate in the new balance equation in the new balance trajectory. Uh, I think since I'm running out of time, I will skip this part on the new Kalekian growth models. Uh, our research is pretty, it's, since we are comparing different types of models um, and with some of these very different specifications, uh, it takes some time and then we can just uh, compare what are the the implications of these differences in growth uh, in the uh, uneven growth models. 
So uh, the some here are some critiques to the new collect and growth model, uh, which we'll press. So, uh, so uh, arriving at I think one of the most important part of the presentation now is the economic growth and occasion Keynesian uh, structuralist tradition. Uh, so uh, solo 1957, the neoclassical growth models uh, take for granted that the ultimate limit to the long run growth in the supply is the supply factors of production, as I said in the beginning, for instance, the validity of sales law in the future, in the long run. But the Calderian uh, Lehmann-led growth theory from 1988, uh, the natural rate of growth is determined by the growth of the autonomous aggregate demand. And the truly autonomous aggregate demand are exports and uh, also an autonomous form of demand is uh, government consumption. Uh, because of technical progress and labor force uh, is endogenous uh, and investment depends on the rate of output and, and the rate of output expansion. Um, I will skip the Schaffin super multiplier as well. Yes, uh, so in a development uh, model pulled by demand uh, in a small open economy that does not have a convertible currency, as in the case of developing countries, the autonomous component of demand is constituted by exports. Uh, economic development depends thus mainly on exports. A domestic consumption cannot lead to long run growth unless wage share income uh, is persistently increasing over time. What is in principle? incompatible with the sector is satisfactory uh, expected profit rate for entrepreneurs. Uh, another condition uh, for consumption net growth is that uh, consumer debts growing over time uh, if we follow the consumption led growth. Thus, uh, the existence of a limit to growth of wages, wage share it makes impossible to pull growth uh, indefinitely through wage increases ahead of productivity growth. Uh, an alternative also, uh, a growth led uh, by government spending is also unattainable because of the main expenses, expenses will sooner or later lead to inflation and to balance of payment crisis. Yeah, so this is the specification of the, the demand led growth based on the super multiplier model type T. Um, so the steady state solution for that model. Um, Yes, uh, finally arriving at the export-led growth models. Um, so one possible way to formalize the demand-led growth theory, although it's, this is not the only one, uh, it's mainly by the cumulative causation models. These models have uh, four equations in general. Uh, the equation where the growth rate of output is a function of growth rate of exports. The second equation is where the growth rate of exports is a function of uh, the rate of change in terms of trade of the world, a rate of the world's economy. Third is the equation uh, that specifies the productivity growth rate as the function of growth rate of rural output. And the fourth equation is where the change in domestic prices is determined by the rate change in nominal wages, uh, the growth rate of productivity and the growth rate of nominal exchange rate. Um, here is the specification of the dixon girl model um, yes, I will continue to the resolution of the model. So uh, after some algebraic uh, uh, passages, we can find the steady state uh, growth solution for catching up. The stability condition, the catching up condition, uh, for the catching up to happen, uh, a, necessary, a necessary and sufficient condition is that the sum of price elasticity uh, of, of exports and income elasticity of exports multiplied by the difference between the color verdun law coefficients of the rest of the world and of the domestic economy and the rest of the world be greater than the export multiplier. Finally, uh, a remark of these models is that the output growth may be demand led, but the capacity of demand to create its own supply depends on the productive structure 
of this modified uh, Keynesian Calder Turo modified principle of effective demand. Uh, finally, I'm arriving at the conclusions. So in this presentation, we intended to summarize uh, the uneven development phenomena under different models of Keynesian inspiration, although uh, this is reference supermultiplier, I had to go quickly over it. Uh, but in the, the entire uh, model we constructed, we compared this, uh, in, in, we included this. Uh, so in, this model, in the models presented, the balanced growth trajectory is determined by the natural rate of growth, which depends on the sum of growth rate of labor force and of labor productivity. Uh, technological progress is, is largely embodied in capital equipment, uh, and the growth rate of labor productivity depends on the pace of capital accumulation. Uh, finally, the extension in which the technical progress can be incorporated, sorry, there's a typo there, in the, the economy depends on the technological gap expressed in the asymmetries of the existing technology. Uh, does the differences in the rate of labor productivity in the balance uh, growth trajectory are compatible with the technological gap, generating the output growth divergence between countries. Uh, in the models with unlimited labor supply, thus also uh, growth rate is determined by the rate of ex expansion of aggregate demand. Specifically, uh, in these models, uh, it is determined by the expansion of the autonomous component of demand, which is uh, the only one is, is exports, uh, truly independent, truly autonomous. In this context, the investment rate adjusts to the pace of growth of exports. Therefore, the equilibrium in goods market is obtained by the changes in the ratio of the autonomous demand and capital stock. The mechanism for the compatibility uh, between the role of demand as the engine of growth in the long run in economies operating of a normal rate, uh, normal degree, uh, utilization rate, and the distribution of income determined at a microeconomic level in the price setting of firms. Finally, in these models, the uneven development is a result of the existence of asymmetries between countries regarding its productive structure, especially the difference of industry to output ratio. Uh, and here I finalize my presentation. Um, thank you very much. And Further questions can be addressed to me and also uh, my co-authors in the research, which are probably are all here as well. Okay, many thanks, uh, Vitor, uh, for your beautiful presentation. Uh, we have two questions. Uh, one from Daniel Peroso. Uh, Daniel Peroso asks, what is the role of intertemporal choice between study and work to reduce the technological gaps over time via increase of human capital capabilities. Example, the, same, the case of South Korea. The second question is made by Marvel Davila. Could you please go back to the numerical example on the natural rate of growth and the technological gap correspondence? Where is the intuition behind the parabola? Uh, please answer, but be brief because we are yeah. <laughs> almost out of time. Yes. So, uh, by the nature of the model that we we the models that we analyze here, uh, we have not included uh, since we have not not a, a, a intertemporal choice of maximization of agents to to in leisure or study or work. So this is a different uh, type of model. Uh, I will try to in in a brief. Try to, if you try to incorporate it in these types of models, um, it's very difficult because uh, you'll have to in implement a utility function for an agent in order to maximize it. But we are trying to mostly use it on term in terms of uh, macroeconomic identities, not intertemporal choices. And so I think this is the answer. I think uh, if Professor Rodrigo has something to say about it as well. Well, I think that we can, uh, the, the problem in all these models as in mine, for instance, is that we take technological gap as a constant. We can uh, make a, a, a differential equation to explain the evolution of technological gap over time. And we can include the, the level of human capital as one of the, the determinants of the uh, rate of change of technological gap, 
for me, I think there is no uh, much problem with that. Of course, that uh, we will not do that by means of uh, intertemporal choice of anything else. Uh, it will be done by by structural equations, structural dynamic equations, uh, just incorporating in the dynamics of technological gap, for instance, the difference between the level of human capital uh, in the South country relative to the North country, for instance. I think that uh, is possible to incorporate uh, human capital in the dynamics of the technological gap doing this way. So, uh, for me, that, that's, that's enough. The, yes, it's a line for future research that we, for sure, we have to, to, to de develop it in, in, in yes. the next years. And the, the question of Marvel? Yeah, the question of Marvel, uh, the numerical example of the natural growth rate of the technological gap correspondence. Uh, this is this parabola here. Uh, the, the intuition behind it is that as the farther you are uh, from the the, front, the technological frontier, uh, the slower you will be able to incorporate uh, uh, these technologies into your uh, economy and the slower will be your growth rate. But uh, this is up to a point. For instance, if you are closer to the, the technological gap, get this, there are spillovers uh, and you can incorporate also this technology, but simply imitating or purchasing this technology from the, the frontier and your uh, labor force and your economy will be able to absorb this capacity and thus will increase the, the growth rate of your economy. But the farther you are, uh, the slower you will get. So for instance, uh, you can see that on, um, I think if we just go to our starlight specs and you see that countries right in the beginning, they were very distant from technological gap were growing very, very slowly. Uh, if I can get to that, uh, it, for instance, we have the uh, example here of, oh no, yeah, of Bangladesh. Bangladesh uh, is a country that was very distant from, distant from the beginning and it's, it grew very slowly. And then you have the example of India as well and, and so forth. So I think this explains uh, the, the graph that you asked. Thank you for the question. All right, thank you, Victor Dota. I think that we now have to finish the first day of the workshop. I think that it was a completely success. We had almost 200 people inscribed on the workshop and uh, I think that the first day was a completely success and I invite everyone for the second day. Uh, tomorrow we will have uh, as keynote speaker, Professor Peter Scott from University of Massachusetts at Amherst. So uh, I think that will be a very interesting keynote speaker. And we also have tomorrow the presentations of my colleague at the University of Brasilia, Andrea Cabello, and uh, Gabriel Porcili from the ACLAC, the, uh, the Economic Commission for Latin America and Caribbean. And on, on the graduate section, uh, uh, we'll have a beautiful presentation from Elder Lara Ferreira Filho, my, uh, my student at PhD. He will, he will be present a paper about the the Calder uh, visiting at a clock in the the six in the fifties, and uh, how this can uh, influence his change of mind uh, after the sixties on the subject of uh, economic development. So uh, there will be um, many interesting issues to be discussed in the uh, uh, tomorrow. So uh, for everyone that uh, are still now with us, many thanks and see you tomorrow. Bye-bye.